Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the January 2023 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1 exam. And this question is about this equation, which is a quadratic equation kx squared plus 6kx plus 5 equals 0, where k is a non zero constant. So k represents a number, a constant number, which is not zero. Okay, if it was zero, of course, this would be like, you know, nonsensical because it would say 5 equals 0 so k is a non-zero constant okay and we're told that this equation here has no real roots has no real roots so we got to find the range of possible values for k for which this has no real roots okay now a quadratic equation okay how do we know how many roots it has well first of all what is a root what is the root of an equation the root of an equation are, or the roots of an equation are the places where that equation crosses the x-axis. Okay, so the places where, where a quadratic, for example, crosses the x-axis, okay, would be the root. So if this was a quadratic, those would be the two roots of the quadratic, okay, the places where it crosses the x-axis. Now, if it doesn't cross the x-axis like this, for example, there's no real roots. Okay, there's no real roots because it doesn't cross it. Okay, if it turns on it just once, there's you can say that there's a repeated root, okay, one repeated root you could say, and if it crosses it twice, there are two real roots. And in this case, there are no roots, so it's the case where it never crosses it. Now, one of the things that we know from our understanding of solving quadratic equations is that when we have the quadratic formula, which is when you're solving the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, to solve this equation, you have x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, c is the constant. Now, this part of the quadratic formula is a very important part, b squared minus 4ac. Because if this in here is positive, you'll have minus b plus or minus something over 2a. So you'll have two answers. So when b squared minus 4ac is positive, you have the case where there are two real roots. They could be here, they could be here, it doesn't matter, but there are two places where this curve will cross the x-axis. So when b squared, when b squared minus 4ac, when it's greater than zero, okay, you have two, real when b squared minus 4 when this when when this thing inside this uh, when b squared minus 4 c becomes zero then you have minus b plus or minus zero which is basically just minus b over 2a it means there's only one answer so when b squared minus 4 c is equal to zero there's one root one root or you can say they can say you can say one repeated root it's called repeated roots, okay? One root which is repeated. Okay, so it's the same number. Basically, you end up with the case where it just crosses, touches the x-axis at that point, okay? And that point and nowhere else. That's one repeated root, okay? So that's when b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Now, the case that we're looking at now is when b squared minus 4ac is negative. Now, when this is negative, then you have the square root of something negative, which is undefined. So this will give you a math error. There'll be no answer. It's undefined because you can't have a real answer when you have the square root of a negative number. Okay, that goes into imaginary numbers, which we don't deal with right now. So this is going to be something, the case where you have the situation where the curve never touches the x-axis, either from below or from above. It turns before it reaches the x-axis. That's when you have the case where b squared minus 4ac is negative. Okay, and this is when you have, okay, no real roots. And this is the case that we're looking at in this question. This is the case that we're looking at in this question because it says this has no real roots. So in our question here, so this is just a little introduction to explain the topic. Because as I said, I like to explain the topics in a bit of detail for those students who may have missed some of the important points beforehand. So we have our equation k squared, kx squared, sorry plus 6kx plus 5 equals 0. 
Okay, now we don't have to write out the whole quadratic formula. We just have to, we have to worry about this part, which this is called the discriminant. B squared minus 4ac is the discriminant because it discriminates between how many solutions there are. So we have a equals k, the coefficient of x squared, b equals 6k, the coefficient of x, and c equals 5, which is a constant. So we know in our case, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0 because there are no real roots. So we should mention something like that. So b is 6k. So we've got to square 6k. Be careful that we need to square all of 6k and k, both of them. Okay, 6k squared minus 4 times a, which is k, times c, which is 5. And this is less than 0. So we have a, an equality here that we can solve. This gives you 36k squared minus 20k is less than 0. Uh, you can see that, uh, for example, 4 goes into both of these. So this is 9k squared minus 5k is less than 0. So this is a quadratic equation. Uh, quadratic inequality. To solve this, we first of all write down 9k squared minus 5k is equal to 0 to find the critical values, the places where this equals 0. And that's, if you take out the common factor, you have k, 9k minus 5 equals 0. So either k equals 0 or k equals 5 over 9. Okay, k equals 5 over 9. Add 5 to both sides and divide by 9. So if we try to solve this quadratic equality, what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm actually making a sketch. But what I'm sketching here is a graph of the discriminant of the quadratic, not the actual quadratic itself. That's the discriminant, and this is the k values. So we can see that it's going to go like this, going across at 0 and at 5 over 9. And we want to know when the, the, the value of the discriminant is negative. When is the value of the discriminant less than zero? So we can see when k is less than zero, the value of the discriminant is positive. And when k is more than 5 over 9, it's positive. So it's when k is between zero and 5 over 9. Okay, that's where you're going to have no real roots. Okay, you're going to have no real roots between those values of k. Okay, now, um, so that is the answer. Now, if we know that k is a non-zero constant, it tells us, so because it says k is non-zero, we, we, we shouldn't include zero in the answer because they told us k can't be zero in the question. Okay, so this is our answer. k is between zero and five over nine. Okay, if it was possible for k to be zero, okay, then we, we could have included zero. Why? Because when k equals zero, this whole thing becomes undefined, un, un, you know, nonsensical. So k is one of those values that cause it to have no real roots. But because they said that k is a non-zero constant, we don't include zero in our answer. All right? So k is between zero and five over nine. So when k is between zero and five over nine, that's when the discriminant of this, in the b squared minus 4ac, is less than zero. Okay, if they say find the values of k for which this has uh, real roots, then you will say it's 5 over 9. We, we can't include 0, as I've mentioned. Okay, and if it says has one has one repeated roots, sorry, if it says repeated roots, we'll just say 5 over 9. If it says for which it has, um, you know, uh, two distinct roots, we'd say when k is greater than 5 over 9 and when k is less than 0. Okay, so that those are some of the scenarios you could get. But this one says no real roots, so we're looking to see where does the discriminant fall below the x-axis. That's what we're looking for. Where does, it, where does it fall below the x-axis? And you can see that it, it falls below the x-axis in this region over here. This is where it's below the x-axis. That's where it, the discriminant will give you. When k is in, any value between 0 and 5 over 9, the discriminant will give you a negative answer. Okay, So that's important for us to understand. That's solving these quadratic inequalities in the context of such questions like this. So there we have the answer to this question number four from the January 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 International A-Level Excel exam. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region here. You can click on that link for it. Other questions dealing with quadratics and um, quadratics I'll put over here and solving linear inequalities I'll put, uh, sorry, solving quadratic inequalities. Um, I'll put that, the link for that chapter over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.